This is New York, a huddled island of towering buildings and steep canyons. It is a huge, teeming metropolis, a permanent demonstration of man's creative spirit, and it is one of the cultural capitals of the world. Here, a far-reaching idea is taking physical shape. Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, designed to preserve the past and nourish the future of music, opera, drama, and the dance. Where Lincoln Center is rising today, there stood, less than a decade ago, blocks of condemned slums due to be torn down for urban renewal. With the Metropolitan Opera and the New York Philharmonic both looking at that time for new and permanent homes, a group of public-spirited citizens rose to the opportunity and the Lincoln Center idea was born. One by one, as new and better homes were found for their occupants, the tenements emptied. Then it began. In the spring of 1959, an historic event took place on the site. The President of the United States turned the first symbolic spadeful of earth on the grounds where, in his own words, here will develop a mighty influence for peace and understanding throughout the world. Now men and machines went to work to lay the foundations of a huge cultural and educational complex. For in time, the original concept had grown. What was now envisioned was not only a new home for the Metropolitan and the Philharmonic, but a center for all the performing arts. It would have theaters for drama and the dance, as well as institutions for education and research. It would be financed by a unique combination of individual initiative and governmental participation. Three years later, Philharmonic Hall, the first Lincoln Center building scheduled for completion, was about to open its doors. Visual art was to be an inherent part of Lincoln Center's design. While Burdell's tragic mask of Beethoven was being set on its pedestal, the American sculptor Richard Leopold was completing a huge abstract sculpture soaring over the grand promenade foyer. The opening of Philharmonic Hall, attended by the First Lady of the United States, was a memorable event. In person or as spectators of the national television broadcast, some 25 million people were in the audience that night. For the first time in its long history, the New York Philharmonic, the oldest symphony orchestra in the country, was about to perform in a home of its own. Across Lincoln Center Plaza from Philharmonic Hall, another building was rising, a theater primarily designed for the presentation of ballet and operetta. In 1960, when Lincoln Center was invited to serve as the performing arts wing of the New York World's Fair, 
it was proposed that a part of state and city participation in the fair take the form of a permanent theater in Lincoln Center. It was named the New York State Theater in recognition of the state's major role in its financing. The theater's opening, timed with the inauguration of the New York World's Fair, took place in April, 1964. Along with Philharmonic Hall, the New York State Theater became the fair's focus of dramatic and musical activities with Lincoln Center and the fair jointly sponsoring an international festival of the performing arts. The far-reaching plan conceived in 1955 is well underway. The Vivian Beaumont Theater and the Library and Museum of the Performing Arts, housed in the same building, opened in 1965. The Repertory Theater of Lincoln Center will be the resident company of the Vivian Beaumont Theater. Its acting troupe was formed with Lincoln Center assistants and began to perform in a temporary theater before its permanent home was completed. The Library and Museum, financed by the City of New York as a branch of the Public Library, have research and circulating collections and exhibitions for students and the general public alike. The Metropolitan Opera is to open in its new home with long needed modern stage and backstage facilities in 1966. In 1967, the Juilliard School will move into its new quarters. Juilliard will be a school for all the performing arts, drama as well as music and dance, through initial financial support from the Lincoln Center Fund. This fund for education and creative artistic advancement is at the very heart of the Lincoln Center idea. Since 1960, two years before the completion of the first center building, the fund has sponsored a student program to bring to the young the magic of the performing arts. It has enabled over 500,000 students from junior and senior high schools in the metropolitan area to attend live performances of opera, music, drama, and the dance. It sponsors educational telecasts and plans to bring to the center every summer teachers of the performing arts from all over the country. The student program takes young artists from the Metropolitan Opera Studio and Juilliard out to the schools. Special study projects prepare the students for the live performances they are about to attend. Today, although parts of it are still under construction, Lincoln Center promises to become as much a New York landmark as the United Nations or the Statue of Liberty. Through its guided tours, available in eight languages, people from everywhere can learn at first hand not only about its buildings, but also about its concept and its evolving role in the world of the performing arts. Now we are coming to the promenade of the New York State Theater. These statues at the head of the stairs are enlargements from small papier-mâché figures by Aileen Nadelman. Now they are made of Carrara marble. The auditorium is a shallow horseshoe shape 
with no central aisle. This brings the audience close to the stage and gives the whole house a feeling of intimacy. The decor retains the festive and elegant atmosphere of the old court theaters where ballet and opera originated. The New York State Theater has two resident companies, the New York City Ballet and the Music Theater of Lincoln Center. The Music Theater is one of the new institutions created by Lincoln Center, giving full recognition to a distinctly American art form, the musical comedy. Other distinguished American theater and dance companies, as well as groups from all over the world, are also presented. Across the plaza, with the Metropolitan Opera under construction in the background, is Philharmonic Hall. Hanging from the ceiling of the five-story Grand Promenade is a space sculpture by Richard Lippold, Orpheus and Apollo. It recaptures the spirit of the gold and crystal chandeliers of the concert halls of the past. In this hall, besides the New York Philharmonic, great orchestras and artists from all over the world will perform. In the summer, there are popularly priced concerts like the colorful promenades, international musical and dramatic events, and the annual New York Film Festival. Today, Lincoln Center, with its inviting plaza and its playing fountain, is becoming increasingly a focal point, not only for the people of New York, but for visitors from all of the United States and from foreign lands as well. When the work of the architect is done, the theater is born. The time of the creators and the performers has come. The time of the artists, working and creating within the great buildings. Perhaps a singer getting ready to perform in a significant work of our musical theater. Perhaps the New York Philharmonic working with its conductor. Or a group of dancers painstakingly rehearsing a ballet sequence. This is Lincoln Center, an architectural complex designed for the enjoyment of the finest in the performing arts, but above all, the embodiment of an idea, an idea giving bold and concrete expression to the enduring value of art as a measure of human civilization. <laughs> 